Hello, welcome to Stepping Out Blessed with Opal Dalton and Friends. Oh, we're so excited to be back with you today. We're having my guest Sarah uh, Grace. She's been with me. This is the fourth week in a row we've had Sarah. Uh, she's been discussing some really wonderful things to share with the body of Christ, and we're so glad to have you watching today. Uh, we don't take it for granted that, you, that you're that you out there watching us and listening, so we want to feed and share, Sarah, mm -hmm. what will be strengthening and encouraging and mm -hmm. help you to step out, bless, you know, uh, enjoy the gift of today. And so today I'm going to just get right into, uh, seems like the time goes so quickly, Sarah. It does. And I do want to say, first of all, that she is a minister. She's a uh, she is homeschools her children. She's got a lot of things she does. She does websites and yes, flyers <laughs> and all kinds of, uh, she knows more how she could tell all the things she mm -hmm. does. I'll leave out stuff. Mm -hmm. An author, I mean, you know, just uh, still goes to school her own mm -hmm. self. Uh, she's a busy lady, but she's so busy for the kingdom of God's sake. Amen. Amen. And today we're so happy to have her with us again. She comes about twice a year into the area, and we try to do some programs together mm -hmm. when she comes, and we're honored to have her as a guest. I've known her, uh, Sarah now about 11 or 12 mm -hmm. years. We go back quite a while, and uh, we've kind of watched each other's life and see how God has been yes. with each other and seen us through. Something we're going to talk about today is trusting God through tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to yes. look into that today. And Sarah's going to share what God has put on her heart. So I just want to introduce her now and, and let her share anything about herself, her ministry, and also share with us what God's saying to you, Sarah, about awesome. trusting Him through tragedy. Well, thank you again for having me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I'm excited. It seems like as we've been doing these last couple programs, you just feel the atmosphere. Yes. I wish I could share that with you all. I hope right. you can feel it at home, that the atmosphere of God's presence is really here. Yes, and um, we, you know, one thing I'm going to tell on us a little bit, we come together, we have ideas, we have plans about what right. to talk about, but when we get here, we begin to, to share with one another yes. and we want God to speak. Yes. And I really do believe that what he put in my heart today um, with this final program is that somebody really needs to be encouraged on how to trust God through tragedy. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, when it comes to faith and when it comes to the word of God and going to church and going to revivals right. and going to conferences and, and whatever your belief system is about faith and what, what you believe that a relationship with God means most people or I would say many people I have to be careful with most right. I can't say for sure but many people always kind of um, associate God only with getting what they want and blessings right. and yes. God is going to bless me and we go to church right. for a blessing and right. God is the ultimate blesser. There's yes, no doubt is. about it. That's right. But God is not only a, uh, my mother says, a celestial Santa Claus. Right. You know, God is not just there to, you know, drop off gifts and no, bless you. Isn't. God is there for the hard times. He's there for the yes. high mountains, the low yes. valleys, the ups, the downs, you know, and when you read the Bible, we can find so many passages of scripture where people of faith were not going going through great times. That's they right. were not they were blessed no. in the eyes of people. No. But what we call blessed, even in the pop culture church, and what the Bible calls blessed are not always the same That's thing. Because right. Jesus said, blessed are you when you That's face when the, you, uh, when diverse temptations, when yeah. you're persecuted, when you go yes. through. There's The word blessing is associated with suffering at times. Yes, the word blessing is. is associated with challenges. And so yes. we have to understand that what, what the blessing really is, it, it's not a what, it's a who. The blessing is the presence of God. It is. The yes. blessing is the hand of God. Yes, yes. So I believe that I can I can share a few points with you today about trusting God through tragedy because I've not only known God on my mountaintops. Uh -huh. I've needed God more than ever in my valley lows. Yes. You know, I've not only worshipped God on my mountaintops, but in my valley lows. And there's some times where testing and, and difficulty and, and tragedy, which to me I would define tragedy as anything that was just unexpected chaos or difficulty yes. in your life. Some people's tragedies are a loss of a loved one through right. death. Some people's tragedies might be getting that diagnosis for, for a disease that it, you've been told it's going to take your life or the life of a family member. Right. Maybe you lost a limb through a, a difficulty, uh, through service in, in the, the army, right. or maybe through uh, some type of complication from an illness. Maybe you have been kicked out of college and you, you can't go to school anymore because you're alone. I mean, people could say, oh, it's tragedies in right. the eyes of the people. You never know what a person is going Amen. through. They might 
might say, oh my gosh, I was working the same job, making a six-figure salary for right. 30 years. And then yes. on the 31st year, I was laid off and lost everything. That's a tragedy. Yes, it you is. know, a tragedy can be defined. And some people might say, well, you know, I've been through this and you've been through that. I'm telling you, tragedy is relative to the person, yes, too. It is. Because what I might consider a tragedy, to me, losing a half a million dollar home wouldn't mean a lot because I've never had a half a million dollar home. <laughs> and I might think, man, you have one of those? I've never been in one like that. <laughs> but to me, you know, my tragedy might be a, a not having, well, I, I do now, by the grace of God, but I have food for the week. Or a single yeah. mother, her tragedy may be different than the rich person, but every person's struggle yes. is valid. Yes, and I know is. that sometimes people feel like, well, I live on this side of the tracks, you live on this side of the tracks, or I'm this healthy and you're this healthy. You know, and everybody wants to argue who's got the worst struggle but I'm telling you I want to speak to everybody because yes. everybody yes. has a struggle everybody has a tragedy Amen. but I want you first to consider what is the thing that you look at and go this is the hardest most difficult yes. situation I've ever faced in my life you know and I want you to look at your own situation I want you to give yourself permission to feel that for a minute because yes. sometimes we'll say I'll look at myself and go oh gosh well I do have this problem this problem this problem but They've got this one and this one and right. this one and this one. Right. But what happens is, even though we might have a perspective to try to ignore our own tragedy, sometimes you got to pull it up, you got to deal with it, you got to face it, and go, this is causing me underlying pain. You know, there's a difference between deliverance and suppressing something. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so that might sound kind of weird. The preacher's telling me to pull up my, my pain. Yes, I want you to pull it up. I want us to look at it for a moment because I want you to face the worst part of your life and I want you to know that God is still good. I want you to face the worst part of your life and I want you to trust God with it. And, you know, I've had a lot of things in my life people could consider tragedies. Um, I won't even go into a bunch of details today, but I would say that going through one of those situations, I had a, a child that was coming down with a lot of chronic asthma, allergies and and at one point he suffered anaphylactic shock mm -hmm. and that is where if you are not quickly medicated or outside of the grace of God you can lose your life mm -hmm. and I remember that day that or the one time that this uh specific thing that I'm going to use an example happened where he came into my room and, and uh, he began to talk to me and then he immediately began to pass out. Oh, I watched yeah. his eyes roll back in his head all of maybe four or five years old at this point. Mm -hmm. I watched his eyes roll back into his, his head and his lips began to become white. And I'm sorry to be graphic, but no, I will I help somebody right. today. Yes. And I, I held my son in my arms and I, was, I had already been through a ton of things over the last year or two and I thought, is this next? on my list I was like is my child going to die in my arms and it was all of a split second mm. and we had already given him his EpiPen and he still went out and you know it, it, it looked to me like I was losing my child at that moment and I just was I was devastated but I got up I grabbed him <laughs> and that mama in me kicked in and the Holy Ghost power in me kicked in I Christ said God. no and I began to um, I, I began to run down the steps I was in a two story house and I said you will live in the name of Jesus and his eyes popped open I mean he didn't Christ just God. he didn't just slowly kind of come to his mm -hmm. eyes popped open and as God is my witness Pastor Opal he nodded his head oh. I knew that it was God because at one moment it looked like I was losing my child uh -huh. for those of you that know about allergies once you give that EpiPen they're supposed to be better he went he went down oh. afterwards but I said you will live in the name of Jesus I run out in the street barefoot run all the way up to the leasing house where the lady was that I knew was a believer and I said please you know help me I'm praying and we already called 911 my other children were screaming and I was just sitting here tears in my eyes but commanding life into my child so then one of these uh, right. trucks pull up that uh, come before the ambulance because right. I was out in the country of Powell Tennessee at this point and uh, they pull up and then at this point I'm praying and I'm just my child is alive but still keeps on you know rolling his head around and I'm yelling at him you will live in the name of Jesus <laughs> right. I mean, I'm out in the in the, the what, what do you call the cul-de-sac just hollering and screaming in the name of Jesus speaking in unknown tongues and everything <laughs> I'm just going for it and then I looked at the the man that was there I guess he was like a paramedic I don't uh, even know who he was but he came before the ambulance. I said, is this normal, the way his head is bobbing around? He says, no, ma'am, keep doing what you're doing. So I just <laughs> continued to get, you're going to live. And he's just looking at me, and he is like trying. I mean, you could just see him struggling for wow. his life and his breath. And I remember when they finally got there with the ambulance, they snatched him up very quickly, put him in the back, and they started shooting him with more epinephrine over and over again. And um, they wouldn't let me in the back. That's when I knew it was serious. Mm -hmm. I was like, they're not letting me in the back. Why aren't they letting me in the back? And they, they said this to me. They said, Mama, keep talking to him. 
So I'm on Facebook saying, pray for my son. Some of you that follow me will remember. I'm on Facebook and I'm praying and tears are going down my eyes. And I'm going, God, I'm a single mother of seven. I just went through a divorce. I'm barely making it. I'm going through all of these difficulties. And now this. All right. And I had all to make right. up in my mind, in the ambulance, on the way to the hospital, if my child dies, even though I prayed, I'm still fearing because they're saying he's not better yet. Mama, keep praying. If my child dies, could I still worship God? I knew in that ambulance I had to decide. Mm. If I don't decide now, I won't be ready for whatever. Because at this point, I've had faith for God to keep my child healthy. But at this point, my child is in the back and he's still coming in and out, still struggling with his throat, not opening up all the way. And I had to decide at that moment, am I going to continue to worship God? And Praise I said, yes, God. I'm going to continue to worship God. I'm going to continue to trust you, God. I'm going to continue to know that you're going to be with me. And I began to speak, Micah, live. His name is Micah. I said, Micah, live. You're going to live Praise in the name of Jesus. So I'm hollering in the back of the ambulance the whole way there. We get there. They finally stabilize him. And I'm like, okay, great. Then they say, okay, he's fine because they're used to this. You know, they're yeah. like, he made it. You, you got him here. And I said, no, don't take him off those those things yet. Don't. I was like, I don't even know what they're called. Don't take him off anything yet. Don't. They wouldn't listen to me. They took him off everything. Within a couple of minutes, all the alerts are going off because he started yeah. going back into shock. A mother knows. Right. And, and they, they ran back in the room and I almost fainted. I mean, my eyes started going back because I was like the stress and the pressure all coming on me at one time while I was in the midst of financial mm. adversity. I was in the midst of other struggles in the home. I was in the midst of all these things. And I said, God, here I am, your preacher. I was, this wasn't before I knew Jesus. Your uh -huh. preacher, yes. you know, your daughter. I'm in covenant with you. And why did you let this happen? You know, you want to say why? <laughs> and, uh, you know, they got him back stable again. And we were there for several days. Didn't know what he was allergic to at that time. Mm. We knew he had one or two allergies, but we didn't know what he ate that day because it wasn't anything he was known to be allergic to. So I had to go home. I'm taking you somewhere. I had to go home Christ with God. this child a couple days later, not knowing what he could and couldn't mm. eat. Not know. So I was living with this idea that any moment my child could he go could back into shock yes. and he could die. And then I began to get tormented emotionally thinking, what am I going to do? And I promise I turn on the TV. They're talking about somebody, you know, when somebody dies and you trust the Lord. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I preparing myself for my son to die? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden my mind is all the way at my burial of my five-year-old I can't must have been four or five-year-old son I mean I was devastated I couldn't sleep at night I had to keep him with me all the time he had to sleep next to me in the bed I'd wake up feeling his chest I mean and I was just tormented mm. and so during that season I learned the principles I'm about to share with you and some of you have been through much worse but I had to go home with this child not knowing how to protect him mm. not knowing how to deal with it and I tell you what God began to teach me things that I had never really embraced before and one thing God began to show me is Sarah if, you know, if your son would have died or still does one day, you've got to make a decision that you're going to worship me and trust me and serve me because I am eternal. Mm -hmm. You are temporary. Your body is temporary. Your children and, and their bodies are temporary. But I mm -hmm. am eternal. Mm -hmm. So how do you trust God through tragedy? You understand that God is eternal. Yes. I had to make up in my mind if my child dies, if, if, if he, I, I, and then I'd have to take the blame. What if I fed him the wrong thing because I hadn't yet gotten these tests and it took time to get them yeah. there and what and then I would have I mean just the thoughts that tormented my mind but I said okay God you're speaking to me and you're telling me that I have to worship you yeah. and in spite of the temporary frustration in spite of all and this is this is one example of a lot of other things I'm going on that could be considered tragic in a lot of people's eyes just being a single mother of seven it's, it's a tragedy yeah. to a lot of people <laughs> and all the losses because I was married and I had an 11 year marriage and had seven children and then you know, to make a long story right. short, here I am with, with uh, totally starting back over. But I learned at that moment I had to trust God no matter what I was looking at or facing, mm -hmm. not even trusting him. God, I know that my child will live. I know that my child will live. I knew God, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I knew God was able. But I didn't know why he even let you it get to the point that it did. Why yeah. did he let him go into yeah. anaphylactic? I, I trust God so much. I'm like, you're in my house all day. Why did you let my son go into <laughs> anaphylactic shock? And you think in your mind, like, you could have stopped this. And that might sound really bold, but I feel confident in my relationship with God. And I, I question God not to question him, like, who are you? I can't believe you let this happen. But God, I really want to know, why did you let this 
this happen. Uh -huh. And I begin to learn this principle that I've now shared all over the country in traveling. I'm sharing it with you today. And God began to teach me through that moment where this mama was at, at a place of heartbreak like she had never been before. Because you can mess with my marriage, you can mess with my money, but you mess with my babies, That's you coming true. after yeah, my heart. Yeah. Yes. And that was my baby boy, number six out of seven. And over the next couple of days and weeks, I had to go to God on a regular basis and say, God, I'm going to trust you. And I don't want you to take my child. I'm speaking life over my child. I'm declaring that my child will live. But God, even if you allow my child to go, I'm going to worship you anyway. Another example of me teaching this is when I get on an airplane. You know, my kids will go, Mommy, you know, you got on an airplane and we don't want you to die. We're right. afraid the airplane will crash. And I sit down with my children and teach them the same thing. Listen, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I believe that I'm just in the beginning of my purpose in life. But if I die right. and when I die, you got to know that God is eternal. And then if we are separated here, if any one of us, the eight of us, me and my seven children are separated here, that we will be reunited yes. in the kingdom, the eternal kingdom of God, in the literal kingdom of God, in heaven, as a lot of us call it, when we choose to put our faith in Jesus Amen. Christ. And as a result Amen. of that, I've been teaching my children, not only do you need to recognize that in matters of loss, but in matters of everyday life, that yes. you, the, you, the situation you're facing is temporary, yes. but God is eternal. eternal. So if you've lost a loved one, if, if you have been given a, a diagnosis, you might be in a hospital right now watching this. I want to encourage your heart to know, yes, yes. by the way, my, my son Micah is now getting older. This has been several years, I Praise believe. Lord. You know, he is uh, eight years old now, and he is at a place of health. We have not seen him. I mean, he's running, uh, ripping and running, singing, and, and, and his allergies, he's been beginning to reverse diagnosis Praise and God. some of his allergies. Yes. And boy, I cherish him in such a way. I cherish all my children, but I cherish him in such a way because I understand how fragile his life is. But don't we need to cherish each other yes, that way? We, we yes, should we cherish did. each other. Who is in your life today? You have yeah. today. You, even if I, I pray that those of you that are watching, that you live yes. long, that you have a long life, yes. that you are healthy, that you're strong, that you're whole. But even if, because we have to serve God with an even if mentality, even if your life is cut shorter than you would have chosen, yeah. if someone in your life, you're a mother grieving the loss of a child, I want to encourage you that God is eternal. So we got to change our perspective. Yes, we did. And we have to say, God, even though I see everything on my level, when you get on the airplane and you take off everything is so small everything yes, on my yes. level it hurts and i'm not taken away from your pain because yeah. god is close to the brokenhearted yes and save such and have a, a contrite spirit but i want you to know that if you would change your perspective right now where you are and begin to say god i'm going to think about that tragedy that divorce that death that that layoff that that fire where it took my whole house that miscarriage whatever yes. it was and i'm going to begin to focus on mm. the power Amen. of the eternal god he the bible says he's established his throne in heaven yes, and he his is. kingdom rules over all jesus yes. came that we would have eternal life yes. and those of you that have lost people that you know have given their lives to christ the bible says that, that they are asleep as far as we know but they're in our future yes. not in our past so pastor opal it's about having an eternal perspective. Yes, it is. Yes. And I love that because uh, that's one way the enemy will try to fight you is yes. that what you've lost. Yes. Yeah. And make you continue to think about tragedy. Yes. And because it was a tragedy to you. Yes. Whether it be a loved one. And also, I think about the guilt he'll try to put on us about, yes. uh, the, I wish I should have, I could have. Wish should have, could have. Yeah, I wish yeah. I uh, wish should have, could have. Right. And that's just nothing but Satan. Yes. It's nothing but Satan yes. because he doesn't want us to look at, at that God is eternal. Yes. And whatever, first of all, uh, if we hold on to God and we are obedient to God, he said he would restore yes. to us all that the canker worm is yes. though, all that the locust, the pommel worm, yes. all that the, what, what is all of them that he yeah, sent against, all yeah. of them that he sent against uh, yeah. us, you know, everything. That's Anything and everything. That has right. come against us. Yeah. Right. And um, so also anything, is anybody that's went on before you, yes. if they know him, they've gained everything. Yes. And then that's where we're going to work and be there one day with face them. To face. Not work our way, but that's what we are uh living. We're believing today yes. that ours is to come, that we're going to yes. join them. Yes. And everlasting life is eternal forever. Yes. That's an awesome thought. The tragedy, well, this is nothing. Nothing yeah. compared to eternal. the glory, the eternal glory. The eternal weight of glory. That's right. You know, oh, 
yes. how I thought. Yes. It, it's brought me through many, many times to go, wow, God, you're eternal. That's right. Your suffering is temporary. It is. But our God is eternal. He's, he's eternal. But we do think as, uh, in our flesh, in our everyday life, you know, we do look at, all of us look at things, I think. We do. And, you know, yeah. trust, well, this could have been that way, and this could yes. have been this way. If yes. I, you know, if I had done this, if I thought thought that different, thought it out, yeah. you know, prayed and waited, Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we had, then something else might have been done different. Yeah. That That's we can't right. See. Right. So it might have even been a different channel. Yes. Uh, worse, another way. Sometimes, yes. I know God spoke to me several years ago, that someday you'll see that everything that you think was maybe a wrong decision or a wrong mm -hmm. choice or whatever, uh, it wasn't we were doing something bad, but that some of the things that you think, oh, you know, I just, I missed it there, or you'll find out someday you didn't really miss it. Yeah. You know, someday when you look back, you'll find out it just he wasn't was a comfortable thing. Yeah. But you did, and you were really going down the right path. Yes. And it yes. worked out that you were. Yes, absolutely. But, you know, so I don't know. That's just thoughts yeah. thoughts in my mind as you're saying this about. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody's had some sort of tragedy yes, in your life. we all have. Yes. Yeah. But this is good if you get a hold of this today. Yeah. That whatever does come in today or in the future days. Yes. To remember. Keep living. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to face. He didn't say if you face trials. Right. He, he said, when, you know, you when you face trials. Right. When, the scriptures are clear. I'm paraphrasing that we're going to go through right. things. We're going to go. Because you know what? The testing of our faith. Yes. Even, and I'm one that, again, I don't believe that God is sending all this terrible no. stuff to us. But what's going to happen, the world is already spinning. And the world That's is already right. going. And so because of seed time and harvest and the people's lives around yeah. us in our own lives we're going to have difficulties come right. but God allows us to grow through those difficulties and even you know as you were talking I was considering a thought I had recently where some things in my life you know and I, I've only lived 30 something years you know I still got hopefully got a long way to go but I, I, I've left seeds you know and I can say if right. I were to I, I believe that I'm going to live a long time but if I were to die today I know that I've left seeds in the earth yes. that are going to grow I've left seeds through my children That's through my right. preaching through my business and those seeds are going to grow so even you know the things that seem like it was the end you know even seeds right. they have to die to yes, live they do. because when they go into the ground they die to being a seed so they they may be a harvest jesus even uh said that except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die it remains only a single seed so he, he slightly introduced you know that's another topic another right. day but that things have to die to live and we know jesus died to yes, live he did. so what you plant in the ground it may seem that when it when it goes in the ground you can't see it it's dead to you you, you spoke a word you preached a sermon you right. gave an idea Idea. You encourage somebody's heart, yes, but you yes. don't even realize that that seed is growing and it will outlive you. It will. And even those things that you did that don't look like they turned right. out well. Who knows? My, my failures in life. People say, oh, she was preaching. She had a church. Then yeah. she gets divorced, and they look at it as a failure. But guess what? The devil, you know, he got he got more than what he bargained for because I got back up and right. said, "Oh, you thought that I was over? That's I'm not. actually I'm a songwriter also, and I'm writing a song called uh, Just Begun.' And, and the lyrics say, "You thought I was over, but I just begun. Just you begun. saw my uh, downfall, but now I see the sun. You Praise thought I was God. defeated, but the devils. Or, I'm sorry. You thought I was defeated, but the battles won. You thought I was over, but I just begun. That's wonderful. So those lyrics basically, it's not traditional gospel, but you know those lyrics." It speak to what I've been through where people thought that, oh, you know what? She's buried. Uh -huh. I've seen a, on social media they have this meme that says, uh, you it buried me. You thought I was over, but I was a seed. Uh -huh. So we don't even realize the difficulties right. in our life that we can spring back, we can bounce back, and then also the things that you've done and you've released that even if you never see the fruit, somebody right. else is going to partake That's in the harvest. Right. I guarantee, Pastor Opal, somebody prayed for evangelists to go forth in Knoxville on television. Right. And they may have never lived to see That's us right. sitting here and and in the studio, but they That's prayed right. for they it. Prayed for and, it. And we might be praying, uh, preaching today, and there is a six-year-old girl watching that That's goes, right. I could be a female television evangelist. And, yes. and then in 30 years, she may be one of the next uh, major, That's major right. speakers in the Quite world that things. saw us silly, yes. silly gooses out here today That's right. preaching at a, you know, yes. Knoxville, Tennessee. Sharing her testimonies. And she might go to the entire world, so our labor's not in vain. It's not in vain. We shifted a little bit, but our labor's not in vain. Yeah. And, our, and our words and our lives are seeds. And yeah. whatever seems lost, I'm telling you, if you allow God to, to, you acknowledge him and you bring him in and you recognize that he's eternal, then he can bring something very powerful out of your temporary yes, he frustrations. Can. He can. And uh, I was thinking about even like our parents, 
I've thought many times about our parents that yes. have gone on, our leaders, our mentors that yes. have gone on. Uh, we have some who, uh, you know, with their age, we have some who have already crossed yes. over of uh, leaders yes. and that affected our early, early life. But how many people they prayed for and the prayers that wow. they prayed. And then I think about the mothers of my friends and my mother, how they yeah. would get together and they would pray and they had their, they called yes. it a prayer band and they would meet on Thursdays and they would pray over yes. the community, over over their children. Well, you know, their children, their seed, their, their, on to a thousand generations. Yes. Those prayers never leave this earth. Yes. yes. They are still going on. And so what you're doing today, it's very important yes. because what you're praying, what you're believing for, and even in your tragedy, what yes. may be a tragedy, that's some of the times that we get so serious and so humble yes. but, and so broken before God. Yes. And yes. we're pouring our heart out yes. and we're crying out for our loved ones, for yes. those friends, the family. Mm -hmm. And those prayers will come back. as They will be they will. answered at some point. The, the people will be touched. They will be saved. Yes. There will be changes. There's all kinds of things that's being manifest that you cannot see today. That's right. That's right. Those seeds are going it's, into the, the ground. The seeds are They're going, going in, to bring into the ground, and they won't harvest. return void. Yes. That's what Isaiah wrote in Isaiah yes. 55. He yes. said, it's just like the rain that comes down from heaven. It goes in the ground, waters the earth. It doesn't return back to the yes. heavens. Yes, it, it has to. And, and waters. Yeah. He said, so is his word that goeth forth. It won't return to him void. Yes. yes. So what we're putting out here today, the, what we come out and we share, and like you said, we may look like silly gooses, yeah. and that's okay. We'll just be silly gooses, and we'll just keep on doing. You know, uh, I think about uh, the chickens do what they're uh, made to do, and the the geese do yeah. what they're made to do, and the, everything, the dogs do what they're made yeah. to do. And, you know, if we'll just do what we're made to do, yes. <laughs> we'll yes. accomplish what God wants yes. us to, right? And, you know, even on that thought, I think about, we can only, do, I like to say, we can only do what we can do. That's right. And, um, you know, not only we, we have, we are going to do what we're made to do, but we can only do what we can do. That's and we right. have to understand that we don't hold life and death in our hands. No. Jesus is the one that holds the keys to death, hell, yes, and the grave. He does. And so we have to understand that, you know, some things are, Really, everything is out of your power. I mean, right. there are things in your own personal decision making that you have power over. But we really do have to surrender to the one that is eternal that is and know right. that we can only do what we can do. We we cannot give life. We can speak life. We can give life in Jesus' right. name, but it's still not us doing yeah. it. And we have to understand that as long as we do what we can do, That's God right. will do what we cannot. And then if he chooses not to do certain things that we feel that he should, then we have to trust him that he has an eternal perspective he has an eternal. of, yes. of you know, what is going to take place even as a result of tragedy. And we don't have time today because I know we're coming to a close, right. but there was a young man that yeah, died just whatever. a couple of weeks before, or about a week before I totally surrendered my life to Christ. I would have never wished it that way, but it was something about his death mm. that brought me to my own mm. surrender to God. And I remember I knew many people that had died. In my, I was in my teen years, early teen years. I got into a lot of, you know, trouble. I was a wild party girl hanging out with, you know, all the people out just doing all kinds of stuff like TV, video, music video life and all that. And, you know, um, just wanting to be a little gangster girl. And just to be honest, that's my testimony. But this young man, when he died, it, it completely, completely destroyed my comfort zone. And I, I looked at his life, and he was a believer. And he would go to church every Sunday. We would all party and go do stuff. And he might not have been all the way consecrated. And he was young. He was 15 years old. Uh -huh. And he was murdered uh, a week before I was due to be married. Uh -huh. And that... That death brought me to a place of, of brokenness that t caused me to surrender my life. I would have never wished it that way. Mm. But his life was a seed into eternity. And never would he know today, unless God revealed it, that I'm out preaching the gospel. Praise and he was God. part of the harvest in my life. Thank you, Lord. Now, see, we don't know how. Yeah. Everything that is being done right now in your life, how that's yes. going to affect someone else's life. Yes. Well, we just speak today over you. We speak. Yeah. You have a word. We've got about a minute. You can say. What well, you I'm believing God with you today as we close in this final last few seconds, really, that yes. God is shifting your perspective. If you Amen. agree with that and you want God to shift your perspective, I want you to just begin to open your heart yes. and just say, God, shift my perspective. Yes, Those Lord. things that have been tragic in my life. I'm not telling you not to feel the pain. I'm not telling you to, to disregard it. Really, I'm telling Amen. you to pull it up and bring it to the yes. Lord and say, God, I'm bringing this to you and I'm asking you to give me an eternal perspective. Yes. So I come into agreement that God is doing that for you today. And we're so glad that you watched today. And yes, we're believing Amen. God for your testimony. Amen. Get in touch with us. Yes. Yes. Call, text, write, 
and let us know your prayer requests, your praise reports. We'd love to hear from you. And I'll get in touch with Sarah if you want yes. me to get in touch with her for you. And you can go back and look at all the programs we have had for this is our fourth one. And we'll be on YouTube. Uh, we are on YouTube. You can mm -hmm. watch those again. And uh, yeah. thank you for having me yes, again. And, yeah, and thank you for coming. And you all be sure and watch again next week. And remember that you are blessed. You are highly favored. That yes. may be cliche, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's yeah. the truth. You're blessed and highly favored. And remember, Jesus is Lord. And just keep stepping out blessed. Amen. God bless you.